Welcome back, folks. This is Jacob Shoup filming for Tom O'Brien. While we do have Tim Ord coming on, first we have the one and only Basil Chapman. Guys, take a look on TFNN website once you're done looking at Larry's webinar. Come over here and you can check out the opening call newsletter by Basil. Again, that is a one month money back guarantee. If for whatever reason you don't like the newsletter, I can't imagine uh, that you would dislike it, but you know, try it out. Basil, are you with us? Hi, Jacob. How are you? I'm doing well. How are you doing, Basil? I'm doing well. You've got a busy afternoon. We got yeah. a lot going on here at TFNN, <laughs> so, but I'm glad we got you on the show. So I always enjoy having you okay. on. So. So what are we yeah. looking at today, Basil? We got a lot of so, stuff going on. Yeah, we got a lot of stuff. Let me just tell you that this little break in the Dow, this little break, this big break in the Dow to the upside uh, on a weekly basis. This is the first time we've actually broken channel resist uh, or trend line resistance. Uh, this is the second week. I like to see two weeks of a break, and so far this is really strong action. It's helping the monthly chart, and in terms of the daily chart. This is only a leg B, and the stochastic, I like to see a stochastic strong and flat at 93%. That's really positive. And uh, the MACD is very strong. And uh, a couple of weeks ago, what I was looking at is um, the Monday action after that Friday low, late October, said to me that if the, uh, the VIX index really skyrocketed over the weekend, that Sunday night into Monday, we would get a, a really serious major uh, low. But in fact, what happened was Sunday evening and going into Monday, the market turned around. So the low was on the Friday. But in assessing the action on that Monday, my uh, my sense was that there were so many stocks that seemed to participate in that uh, two day rally from the from the Friday low into the uh, into the Monday afternoon. I liked what I saw, and I thought this is an ideal opportunity for subscribers to get into a stock that we've been looking at for ages. We missed uh, one of the moves, and it just kept going up, going up, went to an all-time high, and then started to pull back. And I thought, this is a perfect time, um, because we were looking at Microsoft, because it's in the Dow, it's in the S&P, it's in the NASDAQ 100, very important component and a very important part of the XLK, which is the S&P select tech sector. So we're very fortunate we got in at 3.38, and today it uh, hit 3.71. Um, and one of the reasons why I was very pleased with the action is you can see in this daily chart, you see just on a very big picture, if you kind of half close your eyes, you see it's like a, a U-shaped pattern going to another U, which makes a very large cup formation. And what I like to do is I like to choose a particular candle if it isn't the obvious low where the number of bars from the left side high to the left to the bottom and then back to the right side high um, is equal. Then I have to find a particular place. And I chose this little peak D in the Chapman Wave. The fourth highest peak is often where you want to go. That's where you, where you can see a turnaround. And there was a perfect plus sign. Looks like it's a doji candle. Looks like a plus sign right there. And I chose that as the midpoint. And that was the midpoint on the on the 14th of September from the 18th of July, 366.78 high. So my analysis took it with the different techniques that I used. That if I was correct from the um, from the low that was being made uh, late late uh, October, um, there was a chance that we could have an inside wedge target resistance line taking it to exactly on the. Uh, 10th of November, back to that 366.78 high. And yeah, we were down at 330. It didn't look like much, but I love the fact that the MACD, the moving average, was rallying. The nine period was over the 14 period. So we were fortunate enough to get along. And it went to the exact day. The price, the left side, right side price time match was to the exact day. And on that, on this past Friday, it went just about 366.78 today. It's making a high of uh, 371.95. Now, what's interesting, using all these different techniques, you can see you can see the cup formation much better here in the weekly chart. So we've kind of achieved what we wanted. And now the assessment is, is there an alternate count? Is this going to go higher? But you can see this rising inside track, these two green, the green and pink line, I call them inside track repellent zone. That's, that was our target, 
So we've just hit that target. If we, if in November, uh, Microsoft is able to get into the 377, 380 area, that'll be absolutely spectacular action. So it's achieved everything that we wanted. But as I say, we wanted to use this as a proxy for the general market. And what's really interesting is, as this is rallying, um, you're finally seeing some of the the real laggards, the ones that just went nowhere. I mean, I'm including the Disney, the Shopify, all these stocks that just got slammed over the last couple of years, starting to move. And I think that that is very important. So together with the IWM, the Russell 2000, started to really break to the upside. It wasn't looking very good just this morning, in fact. And now it's starting to improve a lot. So if we can start to see a rotation that says, the uh, the leaders, the Magnificent Seven, of which Microsoft is one of the leaders, if they can slow down, you can start to see the others take up the slack. So I like you had mentioned um, SDLD. Uh, um, I always I always remember the, the name and I forget uh, the symbol uh, that Steel Dynamics. But if you look at the SLX, which is the um, the SLX is the Van Eck Vector Steel ETF. Mm. All of a sudden, they've come alive. If you look at right. PAVE, PAVE, which is uh, this is the Global X US Infrastructure Development and Development ETF, uh -huh. just came alive. So I think that this this is really important. Plus, you've got the dollar pulling back very strongly, and bonds are uh, starting to rally, so that yields are coming down. There are a lot of things that are looking pretty good. They weren't looking so good even even a few days ago. I like I like what I'm seeing. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, even, you know, I was talking earlier in the show too, uh, some of these housing stocks, you know, Toll Brothers is blown up today uh, among a few others. And um, I think with the interest rates hey, coming wait, down. Wait. We should, the terminology I think is more rocketing. Yeah, absolutely. No, <laughs> yeah. no kidding. I mean, we're up like 8% and like on average between like the, I think five stocks are looking up today. It, it's insane. So yeah, this market in general is just completely coming alive. And um, it's kind of awesome to see, you know, because things have been a little laggard for a while, right? It, it, well, what's awesome to see is that it's broadening out because they right. have these selective moves where you've got just a handful of stocks um, in, in a particular sector moving up. That's, unless you're in it, it's really unfortunate. In this, you know, talking about uh, sectors, We've been in the uranium sector. Who would have thought that uranium uh -huh. is doing so well? So we've got UBC, which is Uranium Energy Core. We got it about three dollars and sixty-four cents. <laughs> Here it is at six oh eight, making a new recovery high. I mean, so it's really spreading out. I like I like this market very much. No, and you're one hundred percent right. That was one of the the things that worried me about the market, right? Because as you brought up the Magnificent Seven, yeah, like that was what was really dragging this market up at any kind of given point, the, you know, the past year or whatever. And seeing it spread out is uh, is good for the market, I feel like, right, overall. It so. is, and you know, I like to look at different uh, time frames. If you're looking at it like the one minute here, the one minute in the E-mini has just pulled back, the, and yet, the five minute is still holding the nine period moving average as is the 10. And that's exactly what we've been seeing in the market, that if you can choose a particular indicator that keeps you in a position, I think that's, that's really good. Basil, thank you so much. It's always a pleasure having you on. Thank you very much, Jacob. I appreciate it. Take care now, folks. Stay tuned. Thank we'll you. be right back.